Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm your host, Elias Arantopoulos. In this Affinity Designer for iPad tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to design a poster and specifically how to draw and put elements together for a circus layout. I will take you through the whole process by first creating the vector rays, followed by drawing a curvy shape using the pen tool, joining paths and adding dashed lines. We will use a vintage display typeface for our text and ornamental objects and add a couple of extra elements to complete the poster design idea. All that with Affinity Designer in your iPad. And so inside Affinity Designer, let's go ahead and create a new document by tapping on the new document icon. For device, I'm going to choose print. Size A4 is fine. But for the purpose of this tutorial, and because I want to have more horizontal real estate, I'm going to choose the landscape mode and then tap OK. And now we have a new and empty document inside Affinity Designer. OK, so a couple of things to set up before we create the rays. So tap on the document menu and let's look at the snapping options. I'm going to enable snapping, snap to grid, snap to guides, snap to spread and then snap to layer bounded boxes and tap done. There we go. Also go back to the document menu. I'm going to have a couple of guides, one horizontal and one vertical. There you go. And also I'm going to make sure that I don't have my snapping on. So I'm going to select the rectangle tool. I'm going to tap and drag to create a rectangle like so. Okay. Now tap on the snapping on, let's change the color and just going to make sure that sits right at the center, like so. Okay. No need for the guides, it's going to toggle off the visibility. Now I'm going to select this with a move tool and then I'm going to convert this into curves. There we go. And so with the node tool, I'm going to marquee select those two nodes, those two bottom anchor points, tap on the Transform Studio, and then I'm going to move the anchor point right at the bottom center, right here. Because I want to taper this in, those two bottom nodes. And I'm going to do this with under the dimensions with the width. So you can do this interactively, or even better, you can tap and tap zero. That's exactly what I want. Okay, just make sure this sits right at the center. There you go. So I'm going to tap two fingers on the canvas. I'm going to tap and drag to create a duplicate, like so. But I'm going to rotate this. So tap one finger of the canvas to constrain the aspect ratio. There we go. Marquee selectors two. Tap on the edit menu. Create a duplicate. Again, rotate, tap one figure on the canvas to constrain the aspect ratio. So here, okay, we have our first group. So I'm going to tap on the group icon here. There we go. Which I'm going to duplicate. So tap on the edit menu and duplicate this. I'm going to rotate this 15 degrees, but inside I'm going to select all of these by swiping to the left and change the color like so. Okay. So here's the second group. I'm going to tap on the first group, duplicate that group and rotate it. Do the same on the this group. There we go. And we have one more to go. Like so. So now we have all these groups, which I'm going to marquee select with the move tool. Okay, and I'm going to size this up like so. And now actually we can group those groups, can give them a name, let's say if you wish, race. Now let's go ahead and add a frame around the poster. And for that again, I'm going to use the rectangle tool. I'm going to tap and drag one. Just going to change its color. All right. And also at the bottom of the context toolbar, I'm going to change the corner type 
instead of none to round inverse. Now here I'm going to set the radius corner by dragging this red handle like so. And also, let's go ahead and add a stroke to it. Okay. The stroke can be, let's say, around 12 or so. Just make sure in the alignment under the advanced, you use the center. Okay. All right. Now, another thing I'm going to do is tap again on the rectangle tool and tap and drag to create another rectangle. This time, no need for stroke just to fill. I'm going to tap and hold and drag this under the race. Okay. And as for the race, I'm going to tap and hold and clip those inside the rectangle right here at the center, like so. And the other thing is I'm going to do under the layer options, just change the opacity of the race to, let's say, 50%. Now let's go ahead and draw the curvy shape inside this Affinity Designer poster. So first I'm going to tap on the Layer Studio here and swipe to the left to select those two layers and then tap on the Layer Options and tap on the Lock icon to lock them so I don't accidentally move them. And then select the Pen tool. In this case I'm going to tap and drag one node with two Bezier handles. Now, in this case, you don't want to extend those two handles too far away, just here. And then just tap and drag. Tap and drag. For the next point here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change the direction of the path. So I'm going to tap one finger on the canvas. And for this bottom handle, I'm going to bring this very close to the node. Release the finger from the canvas tap and drag, and then one more, tap and drag, like so. There we go. Let's give it a, a color here to see what we're doing. All right. Now, I want this to be duplicated, so I'm going to tap on the Edit menu, Duplicate. Just bring this to the other side. And under the Transform Studio, Let's go ahead and flip this horizontally. So tap on the flip horizontal icon. There we go. Now I'm going to marquee select those two. Tap on the edit menu, create another duplicate. Move this down. There we go. And under the transform studio, you can flip this vertically. So tap on the flip vertical icon like so. Okay. So I'm going to select those two curves, the top two curves, which is this one and this one. Tap on the node tool and then under the in the context toolbar, we're gonna tap on the join function. Now those two have been joined, those two curves have been joined. I'm gonna do the same for the rest two curves. Again, I'm gonna join them. And then the, those two I'm gonna join them again. So now I have one curve that all join paths. Okay. In this case, I'm just going to size this down a bit. like so. Okay. Let's also give it a color. So for fill, I'm just going to give this dark blue kind of. And for the stroke, I'm just going to use black. There is one more thing I would like to add in this curvy shape. So tap to select it. And I'm going to go to the edit menu and I create a duplicate. So under the color studio, I'm going to swipe up on the fill. So no fill, just a stroke. And for the stroke, white is fine. Okay. Now I need to bring this in. So I'm going to first make sure that I don't have my snapping on. So I'm going to bring this in here from all sides. Like so. Okay. And instead of a solid line, I'm going to have a dashed line. So tap on the Stroke Studio, tap on this uh, dashed icon, and for the width, 
I'm going to do this numerically. So 1.5 points is fine. Under dash pattern, 2 is fine for dash. And for the gap, 2 is fine as well. And under the advanced options here for the cap, I'm going to go for the square. And then for join, I'm going to go for the bevel option, like so. And there we go. That's exactly what I was going for. So since this is a poster, I'm going to add a bit of a text. And for that, I'm going to use a vintage display typeface that I came across. And I actually provide a direct link to that at the bottom of the video description in case you're interested. So I'm going to select those two curves. I'm going to lock them just in case, so I don't want to move them accidentally. And then I'm going to tap on the artistic text tool. Tap once. The circus, let's say. Make sure it's center aligned. Okay. Let's size it up. And let's change the font to this vintage display font that I'm using. There we go. And under the positioning, actually, you can have the letting here. You can adjust the letting. You can also adjust the tracking. Okay. All right, let me adjust the letting even more. Then bring this down. And then just size this down like so. Okay. Now let's go ahead and change the color. Let's say a color like this. And then um, let's see. Um, instead of regular, I'm going to go for bold. Okay. And then under stroke, let's have a bit of a stroke here, which I don't see it very much. So I'm going to increase the stroke width. Okay. Like so. Let's see on the stroke. I'm actually going to go the alignment on the center under the advanced options. And under the Layer Effects Studio, I can have a bit of a auto shadow here. Okay. So at the bottom, we have the context toolbar and we have our options. You can actually do this interactively. So tap and drag this, you see, I can do this interactively. And it depends what you want. You don't need to have a lot of opacity. Something along those lines. Okay. And there you go. That's the, uh, the typeface right in the center. So since this is a display font, it also comes with some nice extras like scrolls, ornaments, and panels. So let's go ahead and add some. So I'm going to tap again on the artistic text tool. I'm going to use the extras here. And then I think it's the hyphen. Okay, I'm going to rotate this slightly. And then just size it down. And just move it into place. Maybe size it down a bit more. Okay. And then just let's go ahead and duplicate this. And under the Transform Studio, again, I'm going to rotate this, let's say, horizontally, like so. Okay. So what else can we do? Well, again, using the same font, I'm going to tap again on the Artistic Text Tool. And I think it's the forward slash. There we go. So this one, I'm just going to slightly rotate it. And then I'm just going to change its color to the same color as the frame. And I'm going to size it down and move it into place. And then rotate a bit more. Move it close to the frame. There we go. Something along those lines. Okay. So we got that, which I'm going to duplicate. So I'll go to the edit menu and duplicate this. Bring it to the other side. Okay, I'm just going to rotate this like so. And then I'm going to select those two. 
Again, I'm going to duplicate them in the using the edit menu. I'm just going to move them down. And I can actually rotate them. Like so. And just move those two. Something along those lines. Now, before I close on this Affinity Design tutorial, a couple of elements that I would like to add. So the first one will be just a Circus Tent. That's a PNG file here. Okay, which I'm going to size this down and then position it around here. Okay, now this one is going to reside under the rectangle uh, but right on top on the rays. So I'm going to tap and hold and move this under here. There we go. And then one more element that I would like to bring that will be just a texture. So I'm going to drop that in. I'm going to rotate it. Okay, size it up. And then I'm actually going to tap and bring this under the tent. And the only thing I'm going to change here, actually, under the Layers options, instead of the Blending Mode Normal, to be, uh, let's say, Soft Light, like so. Okay. And just looking at this, a couple of things I would like to move, move around, that would be those center pieces. Just going to bring this up a bit, like so. Well, there's a lot you can accomplish inside of Affinity Design and for iPad, including designing posters. In this tutorial, we covered some basic vector tools together with vintage display topography and other elements to create a poster idea. Thank you for spending time with me. Let me know if you have any questions below the comments section. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share the knowledge.